been talking about this idea that maybe we want to add some other constraints to the selection process for the parameters for our model. And one possible set of constraints is something called regularization. And the general idea is that we don't want to select arbitrary slopes for our, um, for our linear models, but that we prefer slopes that are actually much more shallow. So this regularization approach, the idea is to start adding additional terms to our cost function that punishes cases where we've selected very large coefficients. There are a variety of ways to do that. We're going to play with a few of those right now. All right, here's one of our linear models. Uh, here, I'm just assuming that we're dealing with a, a scalar uh, output here. So, so y j hat is just a scalar value. Uh, xj, of course, is an arbitrary vector. And we've already talked about this, the, the case of creating a mean squared error cost function, which looks like this. Take the differences between the yj's and the yj hats. Put together the squared differences between those two. We've already gone through some of the mathematics, uh, and in particular um, in the vector matrix form, we can rewrite that top equation instead of explicitly pulling out each individual. Uh, item from our data set, we can write those as one large uh, vector matrix multiplication. So th it was this form here. So now that X matrix has a whole set of column vectors, one for each uh, data set element, and likewise for Y, it has a whole set of columns, one for each of the uh, samples in, say, our training set. And when we apply the, the normal equation, the the full answer that we end up with, and we've already talked about this, is along these lines here. And I'm going to leave just a little bit of space here. So this should at least look familiar. For some of you who have worked in linear algebra, this will, there'll be a little bit more intuition here. This, this scenario, though, that we were just talking about, where we have a very small uh, data set uh, and a dimension of x is independent of the prediction of y that we're trying to make, that corresponds to a scenario where this matrix here, x, x transpose, is very ill-conditioned. And when we say ill-conditioned, what we mean is that it's uh, very hard to invert properly. We, we actually run up against a number of numerical instabilities uh, such that the inversion process, uh, we, we can't actually estimate the, the values of the individual elements of the matrix very well. Because we can't compute this inversion well, what that means is that elements of our coefficient uh, vector here, w hat, en end up having very high magnitude. And, and as we change even individual samples in, in the XY training set pairs, those W hats can actually change very dramatically. This, this turns out to be exactly the situation that we're, we're in with the brain machine interface data. So one of our first regularization approaches to this problem is to add an extra term here to the cost function. So I'm gonna write that in purple here. And what we want to do is punish all of the coefficients. So we're going to take the uh, individual coefficients and, uh, and square them. So i goes from 0 to n minus 1 here, going from 0 to n with, with i here. So the, the cost function e now includes both the term that corresponds to how well we match the data and another term that punishes the function for having very large WIs. And I should add, there's one other term in here, this lambda here. So lambda is what we refer to as a regularization parameter. And how we end up selecting this regularization parameter is 
is usually a, an empirical question. We actually, in my lab, we have some nice heuristics for how to, how to pick that well. Uh, but often, it's best to take an empirical approach to selecting it. As lambda gets closer to zero, we're going to end up with our, uh, with, with our original least mean squared uh, type of problem. Uh, but as lambda gets larger, we start to put more and more weight on, uh, on these, the latter term. How this affects our uh, final solution using the normal equation is that we, we end up with this term inside the sum where lambda appears and then there is an identity matrix. So this, this matrix here uh, is just uh, a bunch of ones down the down the uh, diagonal and zeros everywhere else. And the identity matrix itself is quite invertible. So in fact, as lambda gets arbitrarily large, the identity matrix really starts to dominate the full term inside the parentheses here. And, uh, and what that means is, is that inside the thing inside the parentheses then becomes something that really is uh, invertible in a nice numerically stable way. So, so as lambda is close to zero, we're, we have, we're going to end up with our least mean squared solution. And as lambda gets larger and larger, we're going to tend more towards an invertible solution. We're going to end up with actually a much uh, smoother uh, solution one in which the, the Ws are, are quite uh, uh, constrained. So this is the intuition behind uh, this regularization procedure. The term that you're going to see uh, for this is ridge regression. And in fact, if you go to the scikit-learn uh, toolbox, there is a class for doing ridge regression. This for a long time was sort of our dominant approach to solving this overfitting problem. And this comes from the fact that we can actually differentiate that right-hand side and uh, solve this normal equation. However, with gradient descent approaches, we can actually imagine other kinds of uh, solutions to uh, regularization. Okay, I just made a copy of our original LMS uh, equation. Another option, instead of taking a sum of squared coefficients, we can actually take a sum of the absolute value of the coefficients. This is an approach that's referred to as lasso regression. And intuitively, really, the difference between this and ridge regression is that uh, ridge regression really very much dislikes very large Ws. And, and so it will work really hard to try and push those down. But it's OK with having uh, moderate sized uh, Ws. With, with lasso, with this absolute value, uh, what it actually wants to do is set as many of the coefficients to zero uh, as, uh, as it can. And so that has some interesting implications as far as the uh, types of solutions we end up with. We're going to do a, a, an example here in a moment where, where we illustrate these differences. But first I wanted to show you one other type of regression. What this other type of regression tries to do is walk the line between what ridge does and what lasso does. And so we actually have terms for both squared coefficients and absolute value. So one way to formulate this uh, looks like this. So there's our lambda term again that talks about how important the regularization is. And then there's another term, you'll see it written as R sometimes, and that corresponds to our squared coefficients. And then there's another term, which is one minus R, 
uh, times the, the sum of the absolute values. And here, R is, uh, sits between zero and one. When R is zero, then we have uh, lasso regression. And when R is one, we have wrench regression. And then in between, we, we achieve uh, really a nice compromise between the two. This particular uh, type of regression is called elastic net. And the other thing that I should say is that lambda throughout here is always non-negative, but there is no upper bound. So to summarize, uh, first off, LMS, least mean squared, uh, is happy to have high coefficients and it will make them arbitrarily high depending upon what your data look like. Uh, ridge regression, wants to make the coefficient small. In fact, all of our regularization procedures want to make the coefficient small, but it really focuses on the ones that are already uh, quite large. So if LMS wants them to be large, ridge regression ends up work really working on those to try and get those down. Um, but it's happy to have small coefficients, even arbitrarily small coefficients. Lasso tries to make the coefficients uh, zero uh, it, it, whenever possible. And, and this happens even if you have a correlation between an input and an output you're trying to predict. Uh, if uh, that input is redundant with another uh, input in, in that they carry the same kind of information, then Lasso could very well set one of those coefficients to zero. And that's not necessarily something we really want to uh, have happen. And then finally, elastic net really tries to compromise between these two. Uh, fundamentally, it wants to make them small. It's going to make some of them exactly zero, uh, but depending upon what your choice of that R parameter is, you'll, you'll get more zeros or, or, or fewer zeros. Okay, so, so next up, we're going to try a little bit of code uh, to illustrate uh, these different methods and what some of their implications are. So to summarize, first off, LMS, least mean squared, uh, is happy to have high coefficients and it will make them arbitrarily high depending upon what your data look like. Ridge regression wants to make the coefficient small. In fact, all of our regularization procedures want to make the coefficient small, but it really focuses on the ones that are already uh, quite large. So if LMS wants them to be large, ridge regression ends up work, really working on those to try and get those down. Um, but it's happy to have small coefficients, even arbitrarily small coefficients. Lasso tries to make the coefficients uh, zero uh, it, it, whenever possible. And, and this happens even if you have a correlation between an input and an output you're trying to predict. Uh, if uh, that input is redundant with another uh, input in, in that they carry the same kind of information, then Lasso could very well set one of those coefficients to zero. And that's not necessarily something we really want to uh, have happen. And then finally, Elastic Net really tries to compromise between these two. Fundamentally, it wants to make them small. It's going to make some of them exactly zero. Uh, but depending upon what your choice of that R parameter is, you'll, you'll get more zeros or, or, or fewer zeros. Okay, so, so next up, we're going to try a little bit of code uh, to illustrate uh, these different methods and what some of their implications are. 